Let's say that you're an unemployed uh, law student. You don't have it. You didn't score a job during for your 2L summer. At least you haven't yet. Maybe there's still time. Um, you're kind of trying to figure out how you're going to best position yourself to get a job during 3R recruiting or perhaps beyond. You know, what is the best thing that you can do this summer to uh, put yourself in that kind of position? Um, Anastasia, I want to start with you since you kind of really have been focused on developing attorney careers. Um, what, would, what would your advice be for a summer associate who unfortunately doesn't, isn't employed as one? I would say the same principles apply to summer associates as regular unemployed attorneys who have been laid off, except for the fact that you have a lot more resources at your behest and you actually get to play that pity card as a summer associate I and mean, as a summer uh, as a law school student. So basically, you want to talk to as many people as possible and utilize your career development office, uh, call up possible people at firms that you want to go to and ask them, like other alumni there. You really need to figure out how to network as much as possible. Um, and figure out, you know, join alumni groups from your college, talk to people, let them know you're looking, because really nobody else knows. There's not a big billboard that says, I'm unemployed, hire me, I went to X law school, these are my qualifications, so that's really your job to go out there and sell yourself, because if you can't sell yourself, nobody else can really sell yourself for you, and there's not like a big job board. You can't go to monster.com and say, I am looking for a summer associateship. So, so making paper mache models of your law school probably <laughs> isn't the best use of your time is what you're probably saying? Probably not, but it's, I mean, it's the same principles that everybody has when you're looking for a job. Job. You really have to be focused, you have to know what your skill set is, you have to know what you're trying to find, and you really have to utilize the resources you have as far as school networks, as well as friends, family, anybody you could possibly who listen to you, but be polite about it. Uh, King, now without roping you into whether or not Oric is going to be hiring 3Ls as, as it looks forward into 2011, to the extent that Oric would look at, or any big firm would look at a 3L who maybe didn't have a job as a 2L summer, like what kind of experience would you be looking for from that kid? Well, I, I mean, I think, I think if you divide up the, the first and second summer and you evaluate those separately, um, the, the first summer really is a time where it, if you end up with a, a real law firm job, you're in the minority. So uh, to, to the extent that you are uh, still looking for a job at the end of your first year and you don't have um, you know, a, something lined up for that summer, I'd say, first of all, don't panic. Most of your uh, uh, law school friends also are in that same boat. The first summer, you really want to try and focus on trying to find anything that that, that will provide you with some legal experience. The second summer, uh, you know, frankly, it's, it's going to be a little bit more challenging. I mean, just to be frank, if, if you are unable to find some um, you know, law firm uh, work, and that's really what you want to do, after your second summer, the pressure will be on. So again, to the extent that you're not going to be able to line up that, that uh, great law firm job, I would say don't panic again. It's a, it, unfortunately, it's a marathon, not a sprint, so you can always kind of work your way out of that over the, the course of the first few years after you get out of law school. But you really do want to try and, if, if a law firm job is what you're looking for after, uh, you know, after, after graduation, you really want to try and find that for that summer. And if not, then again, you're sort of back where you were in the, at the end of the first year. Find something, anything, where, where there's going to be, you're going to be exposed to legal issues uh, that you can you know, utilize some of the, the training that you've developed over the, the, the first year or two in law school. Now, Steve, similar question for you. A lot of kids might have kind of run up against a brick wall doing big firm recruiting um, after their 2L summer, and now might be coming up to their 3L summer, maybe thinking a small firm is a softer touch. Now, I know that generally isn't true, but what advice would you have for those, for those students? For <clears throat> second year or first year? Let's say either. Okay. Let's say either. We don't hire people right out of school anyway, so in, in a way, <laughs> we're a little bit out of, out of that discussion, but I, I do have some views on this, and I think that, um, especially first year, I, I would disagree with King. I would say I would not look for any type of legal job that you could get. I would try and take a little stock of yourself and say, you know, what interests me? And if you have some sense of what you want to do, um, try to do something that allows you to develop your skills. And so few lawyers, young lawyers, really take the time. And these are for people that graduate at the very top of top schools and people who graduate from schools that are not necessarily considered the top schools seem to not really you know, be devoted to developing their craft, developing their skill set. And, and if you can do that and find something to do, whether it's paying or not, 
um, I think that gives you a leg up. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, you know, finding something that pays becomes important. And in, in that case, I would say, you know, if, if you have to take a non-law job in order to pay the rent and, you know, do that for a few months, but maybe still be able to get a part-time job. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a trial lawyer. I come from a world where all I've done is litigation my, my whole career. So using that as a background or an example, if you can find an opportunity to work in a government law office, whether it's an attorney general's office, a local DA's office, um, a, a public defender's office, and work for free, I think that that's great. A lot of federal judges and state judges I know, uh, you know, sort of expanded the program within their chambers to take on people to work as free interns. And those are great opportunities. And if you do that and you try and work on, you know, developing your skill set, maybe taking uh, some CLE courses that are focused on evidence or trial practice, taking the time to do those sorts of things so that you know, the next year when you're looking for a job, uh, which again may be different s sorts of firms or government offices that you may be looking at, you're at least, you know, offering something other than simply saying, you know, I got a job working at, uh, at some company or some place that didn't really, you know, kind of jive with my, my interests. The other kind of caveat to that is if you can find something that you've just got an interest in, I think that's, that's a, this is a great time to do it after your first.